Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Toby Salgado right here with Super Agents Live. If you are new to the show, let me tell you what we do very briefly. I talk with the most successful people in real estate. We talk about how they built their business, what they learned along the way, so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Now, I'm delivering this episode a little bit late, so hey, look, I'm sorry about that. But uh, here at my house, I'm having a party this weekend. It's going to be like 120 people here, so I've been super busy trying to get stuff together and clean up a yard and all that stuff. So today's episode is I do my first panel. I've never had two people on at one one time. I wasn't too concerned with it, but so it's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a different dynamic than just doing a one person, especially, and if you have listened to the, our previous episode was with a, this guy, Rick Ruby, just a super intense guy. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on that on Twitter. So if you haven't listened to that, go, go check it out. Now, here's what our guest covers today. They have this be everywhere type of marketing strategy, and uh, and they really do it all. They do a great job of social media. We talk about that. They do a great job with emailing their database with videos, so they're constantly mining their database with different types of, of content. Um, they they're on radio. We also talk about how and how they built their team and why you should build a team. So there's lots of nuggets in here now. For you, if, if you if you like this episode and you don't want to miss future shows just like this, you're going to want to do two things. First, go to the site at superagentslive.com, download my ebook, and join our free member site. Uh, we have lots of good spreadsheets uh, right there in the uh, in the silver category, and uh, you should check them out. So, um, if you listen to this episode and you're like, hey, I want to copy what the most successful people are doing with radio, send me an email. Let's chat. That's that's certainly part of our platform here. Um, before we get to it, follow the show on Twitter at Super Agents Live. Let's get to the show. Good. Today's guest is someone I want you guys to pay attention to. They are doing a ton of social stuff right. More right than I've seen in a long time. They have a radio show. They're using video. They do community events. Let's dig in. I'm thrilled to welcome my first panel, Adrian Lally and Attilio Leonardi. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the time out. Hi, there. Hi, Toby. Thanks hey. for having us on. No problems. Yeah. So, so listen, you guys, you guys are doing a ton of stuff right. And, and for everybody out there, if you're listening to this, I w- would love for you guys to go check out their website. It is at uh, Team Lally. L-A-L-L-Y dot com. See what they're doing because they're doing a ton mm-hmm. of stuff right. You know, you guys are using – look, hold on. So let me back up. I gave everybody a little overview of you guys and what you're doing. But maybe take a minute, both Adrian and Atelier, tell us a little bit about yourself so people can get a feel for who you are. And then and then tell us about your business. All right. Ladies first. Go ahead. Okay. So originally I'm from, from Maryland and I joined the Army about – 12 years ago, and I was stationed over at Schofield Barracks as my first duty station. So after having my first child, I decided that I was no longer, uh, I did not want to be deployed and be gone from my child for 15 months. So uh, so I got out of the Army, and I started doing real estate. Um, I grew up in the real estate business, so I felt like it was something that I was familiar with and that I could do, and it would be fine. So... Um, yeah, so I've been doing real estate, and uh, with every child, it was, became more and more um, difficult. So that, that that's why you know we started the team, so that we could you know be successful with our clients and you know with our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah and look, and before, so, and, and just hold on, Natalie, before you jump in, I just you know sure. one, one thing about that you know that I want to impress everybody in the audience is you know I, this is what I say about real estate, right? You you guys are a very successful team. You're very successful individuals, but in real estate, man, you don't have to have a fancy education, right? You you, you came out of the army. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have a giant network, you know, a giant sphere to be successful. So so I love that about your background. Sorry, Atilio, go for it. No, I was just going to chime in and just say, hey, you know, our success is like, I, I don't know, I think it was a quote from 
from uh, Thomas Edison or something like that. It, it, it came, it came camouflaged in overalls, and it's called mm-hmm. work. We yeah. are just willing to outwork anybody ten, ten times over, and, it, and it's not just about work to be busy, but about being efficient. So speaking of efficient, so a little bit about myself. I got my license, didn't do anything with it for two years, and then I realized, hey, you know what? I've been in sales. I just need to move to a bigger ticket item. I love being in sales that, you know, since high school, I've always been selling. And um, I was actually started working with people back in the, in the bubble period of all these uh, homeowners that were upside down and needing to do a short sale. And I literally would go knock on their doors and say, and it wasn't any fancy spiel. It was, do you need help? My name's Attilio. I'm a realtor. I noticed you got an auction date coming up. Mm-hmm. And they would invite me in and say, no one's ever knocked on my door or offered to help me started doing a ton of those so it's like pick the worst kind of transaction you can do and and cut your teeth on it as a brand new realtor and then everything else after that is a piece of cake and then i actually got an equity listing referral because i was up so early calling banks that this agent from florida didn't realize that no one's up and i'm up calling the banks and he says i got a buddy of mine needs to sell his golf course listing he's not facing foreclosure he's not upside down this is an equity sale. And I'm like, Whoa, what do you do with those? So I <laughs> call my broker, give me the top three agents. I need to partner up with somebody so you can teach me how to do this stuff. Cause I'm doing the, you know, gorilla type real estate here. And, um, two of the, an interesting thing, they're all ladies. We're all the top three agents in our brokerage. And two of them were just lived. We're out of the other office that was further from me. And then Adrian was in the closer office. So you see the massive scientific uh, procedure that I went through <laughs> yeah. to determine my future partner. But sometimes that's kismet. You know, it just happens. And um, I, it's synergy. One plus one mm-hmm. wasn't two. One plus one equals 11. I could have gone and started a team. But what I told Adrian, and she'll know the answer to this, and you got to know what someone's why is. Adrian, what's my why? Your time. Time is very valuable. Time with your family. With with my family, not doing real estate 23 hours a day, even though I did answer your email very early this morning because I I, I am (laughs) ready to work. But uh, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a local boy born and raised. Awesome. Okay. So, so you guys have a lot of stuff that, that looks like magic, you know, um, Mm-hmm. You guys are doing a lot of stuff that I tell people do, right? So you're using video, right? If I land right on your site, you have a mm-hmm. you, you have a listing, you have a um, a client testimonial. You guys are doing radio, mm-hmm. so so let's let's talk about that, right? So you have um, and look, if I'm at your site, uh, and if I go to links, you have a client appreciation party, you have business partners, a business directory, you have a Lo- Loha City Rollers Pacific, you have doing all this community outreach. I mean, let's talk about the number mm-hmm. of the number of lead generation sources, or, or I'm sorry, lead generation channels that you have, and which ones are working for mm-hmm. you. So, so well, uh, I, I would say that you know a, a big one is our radio. Yeah, um, that's number one. Yeah, so we're on uh, ESPN. We're also on KHVH, two um, more like talk radio stations, and they really target those uh, those demographics that are are purchasing and selling. So radio radio is huge for us. Uh, we do get a lot of recognition, and it's it's kind of like with all these different sources that we're that we're pushing the advertising out through. It's like they'll get most of the time the consumers will get pinged from different sources. Like they'll get a postcard and then they'll hear us on the radio, right. or um, maybe like we've they've gotten on our mailing list somehow and they've gotten a video from us, and then you know then they hear us on the radio or they get a postcard. So it's like usually they're getting tapped from us from multiple sources, and um, it just like makes us look like oh my gosh they're everywhere. Yeah. I need to work with them, right? Or mm-hmm. hey, I need to send my friends to work with them because you know they know what they're doing. I think it, it builds credibility. So before you actually walk in the room to sit down and do a listening presentation, they're pretty much 80% of the way there. Yeah, they're done. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys have, yeah. you know, if you're yeah. on the radio and you're talking about, you know, you're talking about the market or whatever, you know, instant, not only credibility, but, you know, you are an instant expert, right? You're on the radio. You have to be an expert. Yeah. Now, yeah. exactly. So I've had a bunch of people that you know on the show that we talked about off air, um, but, uh, Mm-hmm. There's there's two ways to do radio. Um, there is uh, one way is just to do ads and have you know have uh, either the local host say hey I I wouldn't work with anybody else except for Adrian and Tilio or two do what you do mm-hmm. which is you have a radio show you are a radio celebrity. Um, why did you go down that path and how did you know how did this you know uh, how did you guys come up with that? 
Well, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's no secret. We're really good at copying what works. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe it was like three or four years ago, I was checking out Jay Kinder because he was doing yeah. so, so many transactions. I was like, what is this guy doing? He's been on my show. I was cooking around his website. I'm, I'm sure he has. We feed him. Um, at, we, we've got the rate, his, the um, rate mastermind. Yeah. The rate mastermind. And then over at, uh, his exponential growth summit, which we're going to be Mike, going to. Mike Reese lived in Hawaii for a little bit. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I was, I was clicking on his site and somehow I clicked over to Matt's site, which is the radio and television expert. And, um, next thing you know, Matt's contacting me and, um, wanted to talk more about radio and what it could do for our business. Well, to, to, to answer his question, the reason why we did the show, because I think, what it, Adrian, what is it about, what, 10, 20% of the rate, rate agents actually do a show? The rest of them are... There's, the, uh, there's 30 of us that actually 30 do of us. a show because of the cost, the, the, the cost and for the, time, the show and, time. and the time and, yeah. you yeah. know, just the comfort level. It's, you know, it, it does take a big time commitment, but... We didn't know that but, at the time, and Matt said, do a radio show. We're like, okay, we'll do a radio show. <laughs> yeah, so we... <laughs> and then you did too. We we're, we're we're big fans of coaching. So if Matt, you know, if Matt says to do it, then you know, hey, we're going to do what Matt says because yeah, he, you know, he he's helped all these agents become very successful. So mm-hmm. we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We just want to roll it. Humble <laughs> humble implementation. That's that's Matt's line. Just, <laughs> yeah. just be mm-hmm. humble about it. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Just duplicate. See, that's just so it. funny. Yep. That's so funny. I think that that I, I and before you said humble, I, I was actually going to say you know that shows humility. Um, that is something mm-hmm. that, uh, that not everybody has, man. There's, there's in real estate, there are a lot of egos. Okay. Yeah. Big ones. <laughs> so, so is it guys, is it that you just didn't know any better and you just, and, and, you know, w- w- was there some s- sort of s- being naive that you said, okay, yeah, we'll do, we'll jump on and do it. We'll spend the money. We'll have faith. Well, no, it actually took Matt a little while to convince us because, I mean, it was a lot of money for the investment, and then, um, you know, he invited us to the mastermind, and that was in Vegas, and somehow I overslept but, but, when but I was from day, there. But, but from day one, we did the show. We didn't, like, do a little oh, couple yeah. of radio advertising. From day one, we did the show. I mean, we wow. walked in there, and we're like, we have no idea what we're doing here, and so after a couple of shows, and just like how you've done these, then we, we started scripting things out, and we learned from the professionals that the more you produce it, the mm-hmm. better it sounds, and I'm a big fan of This American Life. I don't know if you've ever listened sure. to their yeah, of course. Um, episodic radio. I mean, that's like the, the, the Mount Olympus for radio. I, and, but what, the other thing is, you know, we, we, with radio, it's, it's, we didn't want it to be this dull, like, hey, today's interest rates and the median yeah. sale price, and this is what's going on in your neighborhood. We have fun with it. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, some we have quotes in the beginning of the show that are from Jack Handy, and I don't know if you remember him. <laughs> sure, SNL, Saturday Night Live, but yeah. yeah, you know, so a, a quote in the beginning of our show would be like, don't you hate it if you're a cowboy dragging somebody behind you and you look back and they were reading a magazine? <laughs> so, I mean, stuff like that, and then it grabs people's attention. And, and Adrian, what do we call that? Edutainment. Edutainment. We're edutaining That's right. them and, while entertaining. That's so And then funny. we also, we did a show. We did a show, like a live remote show from one of my roller derby bouts. Yeah. So, like, I had to go skate in this big tournament, but I didn't want to miss the radio show. So we just did it from our cell phones. Yeah. And um, we interviewed some of the roller derby coaches and we tied it into teamwork. Because, you know, with roller derby, you got to work together as a team, you know, to score the points. So same thing with real estate. You got to work um, as a team. Yeah, it was an interesting show. We actually had... Um, a seller Direct, yeah, directly yeah. from that call, we got an eight hundred thousand dollar listing. Amazing, man! Call. Amazing. Okay, well, look, so, one last question. We can move on from you, but what yeah. what percentage of your business comes from radio? It's it, you know what it's hard to say mm. because people they'll come in and they'll say, "Well, we heard you on the radio," um, but then we also were on your you were on your website, so it's it's it, it's very hard to track. Um, I guess. The, the specific percentage, um, but most, yeah. most of the time people they they do hear us, but maybe we ping them another way. Mm. I think we um, have so much marketing going on that sometimes even the even the client themselves don't remember. They right. just they're in they're in our clutches. And, they're in the and, web, and, and we're being we sticky. Went. Yeah, they're all sticky in there, and they're like, I don't know how I ended up in here, but I like your message. I like you guys. 
you have an excellent track record. Let's get this home sold well, or help I mean, you buy a home. Here's another example. We have a $3 million uh, seller listing over in North Shore who's yeah. being referred to us from another agent because it's kind of beyond for scope. Huh. And he has, he, he's been listening to us. He's heard us on Sean Hannity. He's heard us on Rick Hamada. He's heard us he's heard our radio show. So he's coming to us through another agent who's, you know, I guess sort of find that relationship. But I mean, he's also, he didn't pick up the phone and call from the radio, but he felt it's, more it's, confident. It's, it's solidifying our relationship. And to be honest with you on that one, we are, the, there was a, there was a previous, this, the past, the, the immediate past agent is, was, got fired. So we're next up and up to bat. And, and, and he's feeling confident with all the marketing that we're doing, even though he didn't have any exposure to it initially. So it helps you keep, keep clients Mm-hmm. Moving along on that path of travel to, 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 to list their home with you and keep moving forward. Got it. And, and look, the reason why I asked that is because uh, because of Brett Kelly, somebody that, that you guys know, you know, he's in a little I, – I'm trying to get a feeling for radio and the size of market that you're in because um, Brett Kelly mm-hmm. is in Montana in a little 80,000-person uh, uh, market, but 50%, mm-hmm. 50% of his business comes from radio. So, and then I have somebody, yeah. um, there was somebody, uh, I think Kathy, Kathy Toth, you know, she's in Maryland in a midsize uh-huh. market and that is, uh, radio is 30%. So here's what you guys are doing that I love. <clears throat> so you have the radio number one, people get to know who you are. They get to, they, they get a sense of, you know, Adrian's temperament and Atelio's sense of humor. Um, and then you also are doing mm-hmm. that same thing with these videos that you have, right? You're putting yourself out there as well as all these, uh, you know, like, uh, the roller derby thing, <clears throat> um, I, I think that is so important to put your personality, you know, get it out there as much mm-hmm. as possible. What do you think of that, Atilio? Yeah, I think it's important because, um, you know, a lot of, you know, it's like a doctor. If you got a doctor that's like excellent at, at, at brain operations or whatever, but he's got a horrible bedside manner. Right. You, you, you'll, you'll reluctantly go along and do business with him as an expert, but you probably, you know, say, Hey, if, if there was somebody that was just slightly not as good as him, but had an excellent bedside manner, I would switch, even though there's probably a 1% chance I might not survive with the other guy. You, it's just, it's so much, it's the rapport. I mean, you develop this, this relationship. I mean, they're, they're, they're stressing out and they, they, they want to know that you're going to make them feel good doing something that creates a lot of stress. So I think it's important. One of the things we tell people is, is, is listen to our show. It's a way for you to passively interview us. Mm. Cause a lot of times clients are, you know, they're scared of the, the salesperson, the scary guy. Mm. He's going to give us, he's going to hypnotize us and make us sign a listing agreement. Right. So they can passively do that with the radio show and the video, get to know us kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't know. They're like, they can stalk us without us knowing and decide whether they want to do business with us. Right. I love it. And again, you know, if not everybody can be on the radio, um, but, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. people can people can sort of simulate that by, again, doing video and having it on, you know, having it on their website, you know, maybe even doing Facebook ads and driving people to, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, some of you, some of these little, you know, videos that they create about themselves. So, Mm -hmm. Or they could do like a podcast of some sort and post it online on their website on iTunes. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get the message out if radio is outside of the budget. Because like you said, different markets, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Um, one of our friends out in Seattle, I think that they pay like $11,000 a month and that's, they just get like the straight leads. They don't even get a show. Yeah. So right. Right. It just depends on the market that you're in. I think and we're finding, sense. and we're we're finding that on the outer islands like Maui and stuff, that it's a little bit less costly, and we can actually reach more people. But it is a, it is a smaller population base. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. I think overall, the 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 average, it's a crazy. The it's like, uh, like with a rate group, it's like three grand to twenty grand. It's just as, you know, depending on on your market. Now look, yeah. here, here's the the the. the Here's what what I'm seeing from from you rate guys, and I want I want you to chime in on this. Um, is it's Boomtown for buyers leads and radio for listing leads? Mm-hmm. Is it, you, you guys doing that same thing? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's the formula. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, and then we just actually just added um, REW as another website to help generate both buyer and seller leads. Mm-hmm. What is that? And uh, we use um, Real Estate Webmasters huh. with. Uh, 
Morgan over there, they have a, a they've created some really nice sites for agents like uh, like Mark Z in Detroit, who does a ton of ton of transactions. Same thing, um, Mark Mark Stain as well. He's got a REW site, mm-hmm. and um, you know we just wanted to revamp our website and make it just a little bit more clean and easy to use. Our our main site, our Team Lally site, that's um, right now it's a, it's in real pro. Yeah. So the other thing I, yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, I mean, we're talking about stuff that's big, huge budgets. I mean, we've got the, the, the transaction flow that can accommodate that and support it. Mm-hmm. If there's listeners out there, you know, brand new agents, if we're trying to appeal to the full spectrum of the listeners out there, like, oh, I can't do that. That's like totally out of my reach. We didn't start with this in the beginning, but there are things that you can start uh, in the beginning of your career. or And one of them is just to start leveraging your time. Um, virtual assistants would be things that we recommend. I mean, because if, if you don't have an admin person doing it, then you're doing admin work and you're not doing the other parts that, that only you can do, like meeting with the client and generating more listings and buyer transactions. So I would say, you know, the team is a great concept. I, my prediction is that the solo agent's going to go away and it'll just be teams. And if you get your brand new license, you'll interview with different teams and cut your teeth initially working with the team and, either stay with that team or go start your own team. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, there's, there's, uh, it, it's an interesting look. If you're going to have any kind of a life, right, you need to have a team. Mm-hmm. You, you need to have a team, you know, yeah. uh, of, of at least five, all right? And then you can put some sanity back in into your, you know, your world uh, and get to know your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think, I think what, here's the deal, what I see, and I, I want you guys to speak to this. Most agents, do not run their real estate business like a business. They they run it as sort of a mm-hmm. like they're a, a different kind of a job, and I think that's where people fail. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, how- well, we've um we've had a lot of different coaches. Um, we coach with uh, Brian Bukini, mm-hmm. and you know his whole thing is really like working your day to days, working referrals by referrals. Yeah, you know, doing the calls, the notes, the pop buys, and the client appreciation. Mm-hmm. Right, and then you know he has this. You know, you got to do your business plan, and we go over. Are you on track? And that sort of thing. And but Bukini is great coaching, but it was really more targeted towards the. The solo oh, agent. Yeah. Yeah. So then we moved over to Corcoran Coaching, and they they did a great job. Um, really coached us more towards like as a business owner, and helped us to get more organized with you know running our team more like a business, um, and becoming more efficient, and you know looking at the numbers and making sure that we're you know we're doing what what makes sense. And, so, and coaching coaching doesn't have to be paying somebody a thousand dollars a month. Coaching is getting a book, like reading the the the, the REW from um, Gary Keller. You know, that's a playbook for how to be a successful agent. Called the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Yeah, MERW. And right now we're reading uh, Steve Cantor's Billion Dollar Agent Manifesto. And he interviewed, like, I don't know, had a thousand conversations with top producing agents of a million GCI minimum. And he's like, this is what they're doing. You know, he's one of those high C MBA guys. He wasn't a realtor, but he studied what good realtors did and put it in a little book. And he gave it to us. He literally handed it to us at the door at the rate mastermind. And I've been reading that thing, and I'm like, wow, we got, we're like, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> specific hands-on things, not theoretical things. Like this is this model works, and this model doesn't work. So you want to do the one that works or it doesn't? And that's a mm-hmm. book. That was a free book. That's coaching. You got to pick up book. You. I'm constantly, I always tell people on my team, what's on your nightstand? If it's Stephen mm-hmm. King, Stephen King's awesome. He's making a ton of money. He already is a millionaire, but that isn't going to help you be a millionaire in this business. Right. So get your coaching, and it starts with reading books, listening to shows like this that you're putting together right now, yep. subscribing to it. That's coaching that doesn't cost you anything. And, and always, one of, I forgot, who, who was it? Uh, Brent Grove, he said, be a student of real estate. You know, we, always, we, always be learning. Yeah. Always be learning because we, we go to college, get a degree, but we're like thinking we're winging it doing the real estate business and you get winging it results. 100%. And I'll tell you something. So my first show, I, I've, I've done more than a hundred interviews and I've released like 84 <laughs> episodes so far. Episode number one was with Dave Jenks, who co-wrote The Millionaire Real Estate Agent with, with Gary Keller and Jay Popson. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what he stressed. He said, you have to be learning-based. That, that is like your foundation. Be learning, and, and you know, if you can always be learning-based, that's how you're going to, to grow personally and succeed. Now, for the mm-hmm. most part, you guys, I mean, 
Adrian, you, I mean, I know your mom was a realtor. Then you went and joined the army, mm-hmm. and then you jumped back into real estate. I mean, you know, Attilio at least had some sales skills. He's been sailing since he was in high school. But you know, weren't you a little bit of fish out of water? I mean, coming from a very regimented, you know, army background, and then and then you and then you have zero, you know, uh, structure once you get into to real estate. H- how did you adjust? To that? Well, well, I I did. Um, I was I was in gymnastics all through my childhood so having that you know um, discipline as far as like getting the coaching and you know just having that work ethic I think that played into it the other thing is that I also bartended um, Mm. in between joining the army so I think I had a little bit of the the sales skills there Um, and then just hearing my mom you know growing up and being around the business but I always swear I would never do real estate because of the amount of time that it took for her and the amount of stress and then just the drama that she was always dealing with. So I said, I, I don't want to do this. And she invited me to come be, you know, in her office and get my license and help her in Florida. But I wanted nothing to do with it. So instead, I joined the Army. I was like, I'm going to go fight this war. I'm joining the Army. And off I went. But, you know, um, I don't know, having, having kids, having a family, it really, you know, it just changed everything. And... Um, I, I wanted to continue to help military families. So that was my specialty when I started mm. with real estate was I really was very passionate about helping the military families and learning more about the VA benefit. Um, how did, you know, how can they purchase a home using their VAH? I noticed that a lot of the sellers didn't want to work with VA buyers because they didn't have the cash down. So really it was more about educating those agents and educating you know, the, the industry on like, you know, why they should accept the VA offer and, I just really was very passionate about helping you know the military families, and that's that's how I started to grow my my client base uh, right out of the right out of the military, and not really knowing anybody here in Hawaii. Got it. And look, really quickly, I mean, um, t- tell look, I my background is is as a real estate investor. And that's kind of, you know, I work mm-hmm. with so many agents that most of them are terrible. And that's one of the reasons why I started this show. But for me, when I was going to sell a house, I, I hated VA uh, offers. Uh, you know, it's there. It's more <laughs> restrictive on me. It costs me more money. Uh, tell us, you know, maybe other people are struggling with that. What would you say? You know, wh- how would you convince somebody that that uh, you, they should take a VA deal? Well, I, you know, honestly, I think that the VA, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a backed by the government, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's 100% financing. So the, the client doesn't need to worry about coming up with a down payment or the closing costs. You know, life happens, people lose jobs, investments go down. Um, a number of things can happen. If you get a pre-approval for a VA buyer, I mean, the, the bank's guaranteeing that they can, you know, close at this amount. It does take a. It could take a little bit longer than a conventional or obviously cash deal, um, but you know I've seen VA loans close in less than 30 days, 20, 25 days, um, and you know a lot of times the VA buyers will come in at full price or even over mm-hmm. asking yeah. price to help compensate for that that yeah. difference. So if you're looking at the bottom line and you know making a little bit more money, hey, you know it pays to work with the VA buyer, yeah. and you know they served our country. Yes. Help them help them become a homeowner. Right. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. <clears throat> okay. So so earlier, uh, uh, Attila, you were talking about leveraging your time, and you know, and how that's so important in, in, to to you know. So, uh, I mean, uh, unpack that a little bit. I mean, how? Because look, most agents, you know, they're they might start work at ten, but they're working at like nine o'clock. You know, taking phone calls. You know, how, mm-hmm. how, do, how do, if, yeah. you, if you're you know, if you live a crazy life like that, how do, how do you leverage your time and become more efficient, put parameters around how you work? Well, I think the first part, and it's that, like, when you're, when you're I'm, I'm going to use a surfing analogy because we're in Hawaii and I've surfed all my life, is that first wave is just totally freaky and it scares the heck out of you. But once you do it after a while, it's like, oh, this is a piece of cake. I should have done this a long time ago. And that's getting that first assistant and a lot of times people are like, well, you know, I, I can't afford the 30, 40, 50,000 bucks to go pay a good assistant. What do I do? Because I'm, you know, I'm barely keeping my head above the water. I have a lot of business, but I'm, but I'm not as efficient as I need to be. And, um, my family is really pulling on me because I'm working like 
hundred hours a week. Yeah. I think it's finding a partner because a partner is a great way to divvy up the labor without having an initial upfront investment. But the two key things, and we were talking about it before about ego getting in the way of a decision making process for us agents. I tell people all the time, I, I'm a high I and, and Adrian's a high D, so she's very low key. You know, I got the humor. I do all the public speaking and I have a huge ego. Big, you know, sometimes in a room, it's not big enough to hold my ego. <laughs> but the key to my success in my initial partnership and how I gained leverage was that I have enough, I'm, enough humility was the word you use to submit my ego. When I first partnered up with Adrian, I told her, you know what? You and I are going to debate on issues and all of that so that we make a good decision. But at the end of the day, and that still is today, Adrian, who ultimately, if we are at a stalemate, who ultimately makes the final decision? That would be me. That would be Adrian. So she's got that 1%, you know, so <laughs> because you can't have an organization with, with two CEOs. It's like a two headed snake in nature. It just you will not survive or a two headed calf. Um, Somebody's ultimately got to make that final decision. And it's very rare that we get to that stalemate. And it's more about what is best for the team. Uh, we have families that we are obligated to and that are on our team and they're supporting and, and feeding their families. And we take those, that into consideration. But you, if you're going to, like you said, treat this not like a job but like a business, um, you're going to have to bring people on and, and create a team. But initially that first step is like, roller skating or riding a bike or learning how to surf or that first radio show, find somebody that's willing to take that leap of faith with you and, and has a similar, you know, or complementary personality. And that would be, a, you just going to have to partner up with another agent and co-list on things and, and work together as a team. And then as you build more production, you start pushing out more and more of those admin tasks. Cause if you're, if you don't have admin, you are admin. I know that's from Gary Keller. Yeah, for sure. And look, I let me, let me talk about about what you guys have done. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't seen a lot of people that have teamed up like you two guys, right? You teamed up, then you built a team. And I, uh, as I was thinking while you were talking, Antilio, it reminded me of something. So you know, uh, venture capital, right? And so people go and they want to start a tech company. Mm -hmm. They go out and try to get venture capital. Now, one of the things that venture capitalists will not fund, or very very rarely fund is a solo entrepreneur. They want to see a team, mm -hmm. right? They want to see at least two people. Yeah. Two. And the reason for that is, is that, you know, starting a business is hard, man. And you get down and, and, you know, and it's when you have that for you, you have Adrian or, you know, Adrian has you. When, when times get tough, you have somebody to lean on, you know, and you have somebody that's in this game yeah. with mm -hmm. you. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, for you guys, how important is that dynamic, the ability to to lean on one another? And and it's because of this, right? Real estate is it's a business of rejection. It's a business of no. That's what you hear. No, yeah. all the time. And sometimes you have those days where you're like, I can't get beat up again today, man. I don't want to do it. Um, you know, have you guys ever felt like that? And, and how how's your dynamic working together been been helpful for you guys to go out and find success? Uh, yeah, I'll make a quick statement and let Adrian take it from there. But you're right. What's key to us is that if I'm down, she's up. And if she's down, I'm up. And that's usually how it kind of works out. But if we're both down, then we just, like, slap each other and get over it. <laughs> but the slap know, therapy. Adrian, there you go. That's what I call slap therapy. We get over it. Um, Adrian, I'll let you go with that. Go ahead. Well, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, this business is a series of, of rejection. But, you know, we, we choose not to focus on that. Mm -hmm. You know, just moving on. Okay, you know what? That's that's their problem if they don't want to work with us. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just really it's your attitude and just keeping that positive mental attitude to not be down by the rejection. Yeah. And you know, our business, time. our business, I would say we got we got reality TV has nothing on what we actually do for a living. I mean, I I'll change the names to protect the innocent, <laughs> but I'm like talking with a seller yesterday, and he's telling me how. <laughs> He brought his shotgun off and <laughs> shot around into the ground, and one of the pellets flattered the neighbor's tire. So when we do the open house, make sure that neighbor doesn't come over to their house. I'm like, where, where do you see reality TV where you can have that kind of conversations? Or right, uh, you know, it's just it's it's, and we just I just laugh. I'm like, this is totally hilarious. I okay, we'll make sure that Wait, neighbor doesn't come over. Didn't he go to jail for that too? Oh well, yeah, he went to jail for a couple of days. So I'm like, hey, you know, it's like. We, we're like therapists slash realtors because we get a lot of confession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Well, so look, one of the and, things. And those interesting. Things, 
Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, what, you're going to say something interesting. No, I was going to say it's those, it's those interesting things that keep you from like getting over yourself and going, dang, I, you know, what am I being bummed out for? This, you know, this person just lost their job, and right. you know, we, we get the, the country song and reverse seller, and we've dealt with a lot of distressed homeowners. But I, I want to go back to what Adrian said. You know what's been the key? We, we, when somebody says, what do you do for a living? I don't automatically say I'm a realtor. I, I tell people I help people. Mm-hmm. And we're really good at helping people. And they send their friends and relatives to us because they want help too. And we've, we've always been busy regardless of what the economy has been doing. And that's what I want to tell people is build a strategically driven business versus an economically driven business. And Adrian, what does that mean? <laughs> so with an economically driven business, it means that, you know, if the economy is going up or down, you know, so is your business. But with the strategic, we've continued to grow each year and we continue to be more and more successful yeah. no matter what the market's doing because mm-hmm. people are always going to need help. So hold on a second. So, oh. so what is that? What, tell me, uh, unpack that a little bit because, uh, you know, I was, uh, who did I have on earlier today? So he, some guy said, hold on, let me tell you who I had. You know this guy. Oh, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Gelman. So Mar- I had Mark on yes. earlier today. You know Mark. And, you know, Mark said, hey, mm-hmm. my business, it, like, it doesn't matter what the economy is doing, right? My business is independent of mm-hmm. outside economic factors. And, and that's really kind of mm-hmm. what you guys are telling me right now. Tell me, uh, what mm-hmm. does that look like? How do you grow in any kind of market? Well, I think that it's just adapting to what's, but selling, like so, for example, when the economy here was was struggling, blowing up, and yeah, people were losing their homes. They actually came up with a law, and it was a really stupid law that, like, basically made it uh, very difficult for realtors to work with distressed sellers. Hmm. And it was to protect the the consumer, but it really hurt them because all these agents didn't want to bother with them. Plus, it was a lot of work. So yeah. that's what we did. We went after them. I was like, I don't care about this this rule. I'm gonna my clients need help. I'm gonna help them. And, it was, you know, it was, it was a law. Yeah, yeah, it was a law that created a lot of exposure to us and, and litigation wise. And we said, you know what, we're just going to do it. If you take care of people and you're nice to them and you truly help them, they're not going to mitigate against you. But there were brokerages, entire brokerages that sent out memos saying we will not handle short sales, distressed homeowners. Got it. And we're like, good, bring it. Right. And more, so more we for got us. real busy. Yeah. And um, yeah. So anyway, and so and you know, I like your question about unpacking it. I'll give a quick tip that anybody can do right now. I don't care if they just got their license or they're doing, you know, a hundred transactions a year. My, my, I told this to Jay Papazan. I walked, I saw him at Keller Williams Family Union. I walked up to him. I said, you know, your book, the one thing that is my second favorite book. <laughs> and obviously that begs the question is, right. oh, and That's he asked me and I didn't tell him, but he asked me, what was your, what's your number one favorite book? And I said, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Yeah. We are in a people business, and I think everybody is. And I've been reading that book. I think I was sort of first started reading that book when I was 19, so I've been reading it for 20-plus years. Our team reads it once a year. My six-year-old knows what uh, knows the, 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 the skill sets that are in that book. My teenagers know it. My wife knows it. One of them is the number one. Uh, Adrian, what's the, what's, what is, what's the number one thing to everybody? Their name. Their name. And remember their name. Remember Very their important. name. And the more names you can remember, the better you'll be. When somebody walks into the office, anybody listening to this podcast who's an agent, they can do this right now. Get a nice frame, eight and a half by eleven, uh, that fits an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. Put it in an easel. When they walk into your place of business, and your place of business can be Starbucks, mm-hmm. have a frame sign that has what on it, Adrian? Their name, along with like a welcome, mm. yeah, a team rally welcomes, and then the client's name. That's fifty cents, ten dollar frame, and go, and by the way, you want to save money, go to Ross. They got all the same <laughs> yeah. stuff. They're one import, but cheaper. No, I um, love that. I, and that, people are like, no one's ever done that. No, that is such a great that is such a great tip. I mean, um, uh, you know, yeah. my when I have a tire shop, I use the same tire shop. They do that for me with my tire shop, right? They reserve me a, a parking space. This is reserved for Toby, and I drive up and get my tire changed. That's a great idea. I mean, what other things? If yeah. somebody's out there. If somebody's out there and they're, you know, we have everybody from brand new agents listening to the show as well as people who have 1500 person brokerages, you know, if somebody's out there and they're, you know, they're struggling in their business. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what do you think, where can people find, you know, is there sort of some low hanging fruit that, uh, that people can go out and, and grab? 
That's kind of a crazy question. Oh, see, call your deep. <clears throat> yeah, call, call your database. Call, yeah, call your past clients. They they love you already, and just remind them and teach them how to refer business to you. Because most of the time, people they don't understand how you know they'll say, "Oh yeah, I told my friend about you," but then you got to you got to train your database, you got to train your past clients on how to refer you, and mm-hmm. you know just have those conversations with them. Take them out to coffee, send them a personal note. That's been. Um, yeah, we've done really well with that. Just, you know, yeah. taking it's, the time. What is, what is the four keys there? It's called number one, pick, number two, up, and number three, the, and number four, phone. Pick <laughs> yes. up the phone. <laughs> call people. Um, you know, and, and, and you got to call. You got to, like, it's call, email, call, email, call, Facebook message, uh, uh, hang out in their home. I mean, stalk people because we are in a society where 80% of emails are garbage. Yep commercials and the Facebook, we're just being hammered by stuff and you got to cut through the clutter. And literally, and, and I'm, and I, I just, I made up this voicemail and I'm going to share it with your listeners. And this is gold. Every time somebody uses it, they got to pay me a 25% royalty fee. No, they can use it for free. <laughs> and I would leave, I literally, I, I said, okay. And Dirk Ziller, he's one of these buyer agent coaches. He said, come up with something that's going to uh, create a memory hook. And they're like, I'm going to call this guy back. He saw, he's either, He's either crazy or really good at what he's at. Let me call him and find out which one it is. And so I say, hi, this is Attilio from Team Lally. Um, I know, you know, don't worry if you don't get back to me. I'll keep following up with you till we, till we make a connection. That's my nice way of saying I'm going to keep calling you and bugging the hell out of you till you return my call. And then I say, you know, these voice messages that I'm leaving with you, they're like messages in a bottle. And I'm on a deserted aisle, and I'm going to keep sending out these messages in a bottle to you with these voicemails in hopes that one day you'll return my call and, and, and rescue me from this desert aisle. And we called, what did the lady say yesterday? The, the daughter told her, Adrian. Oh, yeah, the daughter was like, oh, Mom, you got to call this guy back. He's <laughs> talking about some message in a bottle. Right. Yeah, yeah you got to call so, him. And I think we've called them for like... 20 times. No, 20 probably more than We've been calling them for the last three or four months. Yeah. Like once I, a week with I'll all the messages. Up. We got the 1.4. I've been talking off and on with this guy for two years. Hmm. So the bo- this is like a Grand Cordon quote. Till do you get a temporary restraining order, follow up. Yeah. So and there's, like, your little, there's your little hanging fruit with your database. And I'll tell you what. So, so if you wanted to get really creative for you guys, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, uh, well – I'll get to the creative thing last, but you know, so on that note, right? You said leave Facebook messages. That's great. You know, you can follow them on Twitter, and you know, if if they're on Twitter, mm-hmm. follow them on Twitter. You know, join into their conversation. That's the, that's the brilliant thing about Twitter is, you know, I can follow you. It's it's one way, right? Um, I can follow you, and I can talk mm-hmm. with you, even though you're not following me. <clears throat> but so, a guy got a job. Um, uh, this this was on the news a while back. This guy wanted a job. He knew the guy that was going to hire him. So what he did is went to Google, bought an ad, and put the, you know created an ad with the guy's name in it, and then said, "Hey, come and check out my resume." Mm-hmm. Now everybody now and again Google's their own name. So the guy Googled his name. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, this ad popped up. <clears throat> the you know again the kid got a job. So I mean you know maybe you could do that. That would be kind of interesting. You could you could target. You could do the same thing on Facebook. You can buy Facebook ads, and I could target you know Adrian Lally, right? And then uh, so mm-hmm. yeah, there's lots of interesting things you can do. So I I, I love that. that I you, like yeah. that. Yeah. That's a great idea. I just wrote that down. Here we <laughs> Thank go. you. <laughs> I, every time you use it, I need 20%. Um, anyhow, I'm just totally joking. There you go. <laughs> so, um, okay, cool. So, again, I want to go back to, and we're going to start wrapping up here uh, in a minute. I, I, I do want to go back to, mm-hmm. if, if you could, really quickly, you guys are doing a ton of stuff. And that's what made you guys so interesting to me. <laughs> Maybe just, Atilio, rattle off all the different things that you are doing, right? So video, community events, like maybe just radio, like maybe just rattle them off so people can write them down and they can try to replicate it in their market. Sure. I mean, one of the big things is, is, uh, is, is, is replicating the brand everywhere and anywhere you can. So I, 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 you know, participate in things that you like, you know, I'm not like, uh, bombarding the little old ladies knitting club because I don't knit. Um, I like old ladies, and they're really interesting to talk to, but I like soccer. So we, I sponsor uh, two men's teams, put the name on the jersey. I got some, we've gotten leads from that. 
Uh, we do, so we use, uh, Frank Kletz from, uh, Viral Video. He helps us produce these videos two a month and we're shooting them all the time. And, and I've, uh, you know, shoot your video on your iPhone. You don't need any old fancy equipment, but they put it together and help you backtrack. Um, one of the things we do is we have a, a we've written a book called the Re- Honolulu Real Estate Guide. And, oh, then we and then the Maui one too. Maui Real Estate Guide. We send this book out, sold on Amazon.com for $20 plus shipping. We give it away free on our website. Somebody's interested. Seriously interested in buying a home that's PCSing or, or with the military transferring, we send them this book. All the other agents are sending them a personal note or some kind of email. They get a book. Um, we take the content from that book, put it on our website. Um, Adrian, I know there's more. Keep going. We do um, just listed postcards and just sold mm-hmm. postcards. And on the just listed, it's not like, hey, the home just listed. It's an invitation to our grand opening mega open house. house. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll go and we'll knock the doors of all the surrounding neighbors and invite 50 them. 50 neighbors out. knock on their door like this. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, we do the radio. We do the individual spots. So we have our uh, local talent and Sean Hannity and Colin Cowherd also endorsing us as well with the radio. We bought a uh, smart car and we wrapped it. Ooh, that's a great one. <laughs> that's a great one. I don't know, if, anybody, if, if anybody listens to Cross, if anybody does CrossFit, you're going to know what I'm talking about. But there's a clock in the CrossFit box that everybody watches when you're doing your workout of your day or your wad. So we got we sponsored their little tournament that they had, and then I told them I want the banner below the clock because every time somebody works out in that gym, what are they looking at? They're looking at that clock, and right below it is our banner. But we had it really nicely professionally designed with the box's logo, and it's a nice looking banner. It's not your cheesy realtor banner. And it doesn't, one of the things we're getting away from, Adrian, is, 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 it is about our personality, but when we put these banners, it isn't like this big, huge headshots of Adrian and myself. It's the logo, the branding team, Lally, and then the business itself, and we're supporting them. Um, Adrian, what else? Well, you're, um, you're doing the home. Well, we, we're doing the community videos, too. Yep, that's yeah. awesome. Videos. You're, yeah. You're doing the home valuation uh, piece, and that's cool. Um, oh, Gary. Okay. You, we have all the guarantees. We have a guaranteed sale. If, if you're gonna do, things. if you're gonna do marketing, you gotta have a golden brick, and that's called the call to action. Doing with yes. doing marketing without a call to action is a complete waste of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we we started a property management division, and Adrian, tell them what the guaranteed rent is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we don't rent your home in 30 days, we'll pay the rent. You will pay the rent. Are we crazy? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. We'll pay the rent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so we're that we're that good that we'll, we know that it's gonna get rented. So we can offer that guarantee. Here's our guaranteed sold program. If we don't get your home sold, we'll you know agreed upon price or, or time frame, we'll we'll have it bought. We'll buy your home. And then with the luxury listings, hey, if we don't get your home sold for agreed we'll upon price, difference. we'll pay the difference. Are you serious? Yes, we're serious. You should call us. Holy smokes. How many <laughs> let me ask, how many houses have you bought? Uh I, let's see. I think just the one. Yeah. Just the one. Everybody, everybody seems to uh, all. Uh, everybody's only bought one, which is good. I, and um, yeah. and I'll tell you. So you guys are doing the the home value, and which is okay. Um, but uh, do you know Buddy Blake? I mean, all you all you rate guys seem to be yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, using... we know we know Buddy very well. Yeah, and we're part of his guarantee sale. Oh, you are people. I think we were one of the first people to to sign up with him. We're got we're it. A, Big, we're, we're a big fan club of Buddy. Yeah. Blake. He's, yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, Buddy's been on the show. And by the way, Frank Klesitz, the the guy that mentioned earlier, has been on the show. I'm telling you, viral. Yeah, you yeah, guys so are we, good we company. Love those viral guys. Hey, yep. I love it, guys. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. I always ask one last question, sure. and and Atilio, you 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 sure. uh, you gave us your book recommendation, um, which is uh, uh, how to win, how to friends, win friends and influence, influence people. people by Dale Carnegie. What about you, Adrian? Mm-hmm. What I'm aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? I would say The Millionaire Real Estate Agent because I read that book, I don't know, after being in the business seven, eight years. I'm like, holy crap. I wish I had this book when I started in the business. It would have been so much easier to just follow the playbook instead of, you know, with the trial and error and making those mistakes. So, you know, having a plan and following that, that book mm-hmm. was and you know what? Recommendation as a new agent. I would add this to Adrian's thought. And first of all, be cheap. Don't be buying at full retail. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> on the, on the, on Go the to Amazon. Book. Go to Amazon. Spend twenty five bucks and get three books: The Millionaire Real Estate Guide, 
the one book by Jay Papazan and How to Win Friends and Influence People. You could get those for twenty five bucks from uh, on going cheap on Amazon, getting a used version. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how about this? You can get it for free. All you have to do is use our link. This is audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. You get a free book. Um, and and but I'll tell you that the other thing, <laughs> the other thing uh, too, is I've found that a lot of books um, that I want, there are free PDFs out there. And I don't know how like – Mm -hmm. do, but there's uh, all those books she said I can get a, I can probably get a free PDF uh, just by Googling, uh -huh. which is kind of weird. <clears throat> all right. Hey, listen, I'm sure everybody that is listening to this, you know, um, they're going to want to say thank you. How do people reach you uh, to, you know, see your stuff, say hi and say thank you for coming on the show? Well, they can go to our, yeah, they can go to our website at teamlally.com and that's L-A-L-L-Y. They can go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash Team Lally Hawaii, or they could send an email to info at teamlally.com. Awesome. Yes. Hey, guys, thanks again for coming Bye. on, and uh, um, I hope all my guests reach out and say thanks and, and check out your stuff. I think you're doing a lot of stuff right. All right. All right thanks, thank you. Thanks so much, Toby. Appreciate it. All right. Go get them.